When I was in high school and college, I really badly wanted to get outside of the United States and just witness other cultures. My name is Jason Chandler. Uh, I was born on the coast of Maine, uh, Wapanaki land, territory up there. The way of lifestyle that I grew up with always seemed unsustainable to me and, and sort of full of problems um, with regard to pollution and um, so, it, yeah, in particular, in terms of environment. So I, I wanted to, to get outside and see what, what might be possible in a different paradigm. And I've always been fascinated by language, too. So um, in, uh, in college, I did a, a semester abroad, and it was 2004, and I came over um, on the recommendation of a friend and did a Tibetan studies semester. So we were in Dharamsala, and we actually got to go into Tibet for four weeks and met Tibetan people, um, both in Tibet and in exile. And so I went back to the United States really feeling changed and really feeling fed up with a, a, a really privileged lifestyle that I'd been leading um, and really wondering how those lifestyles that I was in there could fit and mesh with uh, broader, uh, broader worlds, you know, different worlds. And so uh, I met Caitlin in like 2013 or 2000, yeah, around then. Well, my name is Caitlin Thurl, and I was born in the northeastern part of the U.S. Um, I, I grew up uh, really focused on school, um, really focused on sort of book learning and, um, and that way of being. And uh, it really was um, only sort of later in, in my life after I came to Ladakh for the first time that I realized that I really wanted to be spending my life working closely with land and uh, with plants, with um, these sort of, uh, I guess, alternative ways of, of living and being, making sustenance and livelihood. When I first came, um, I was so young and I didn't have a lot of expectations at that time. I was sort of just uh, just wondering, wondering what the world was like, maybe. Um, I was really, I remember being very struck by, um, by the way that people practiced Buddhism here and also by the way that people were farming and the way that sort of seemed woven as one thing. Um, this this faith that people carried and the way that they were in relationship with their land, it, I think that that was the most striking th thing to me at that time. And she had this dream of coming back to Ladakh. Ladakh is a place I'd heard of because a friend came when he did the, the same semester program. And um, he came and, and lived and worked with nomads uh, in Changtang for a month. So I'd heard about Ladakh, was very curious about... Um, about the connection with Tibet and also, you know, what it looked like here compared to uh, inside of, you know, Chinese occupation. And again, yeah, my heart had just really been touched that time coming here. And I felt changed by that and was falling in love with Caitlin as well and really wanted to, was feeling kind of uh, unrooted, you know, not knowing where I was going, um, but really wanted to be with her. And so came here and and started this, uh, this, these relationships. Well, we came to Sekmol and we uh, studied Ladakhi and had the opportunity, you know, every day and every evening to speak with, with beautiful Ladakhi youth. And we taught some English and we taught some songs and started learning some Ladakhi songs. And then we got to know students over the course of a couple of months and at some point let them know we really intend to be here for a couple of years. Uh, one of our students at that time, one of the foundation students, was a young woman named Chondol, and she invited us to go back to her village to help with the plowing. We had, we had let all of the students know that we had this hope to be in a village for at least a whole cycle of seasons, to be part of the whole agricultural process and just be learning about the ways that people are farming in, in Ladakh. And so she invited us um, 
actually first went to another village called Takmachik and uh, spent three weeks plowing. That was a bit lower, so plowing happened earlier. And then we traveled to Tar and arrived just at the beginning of the plowing and were welcomed into this really special community. It's about an hour and a half's walk up a canyon from the road. Um, so in a lot of ways, Tar until very recently, had sort of um, lagged behind the rest of Ladakh in development by 10 or 15 or 20 years. Um, so a lot of things were still in active practice there that were maybe already beginning to be let go of in some of the more connected places. Um, and there are only 12 or 13 households there, and um, people have an incredibly robust practice of helping each other. And so, especially during the plowing season, um, almost every household is present for every other household's plowing time. And so through that whole first month that we were there, we were just working um, together with each family sort of in this rotation around the village. And uh, by the end of a month, we felt, we felt so connected with everybody there. It was just, it was so, so beautiful to witness the plowing. Uh, it felt like seeing something that maybe my people have done for a long time, but I've never seen, you know? And um, the songs, like the songs of the plowman and the, all the people working together in the field with hand tools and um, just really amazing um, to see that for the first time and realize that not only is it really beautiful, but it's, and it is hard work, um, but it's also a truly sustainable way of life that's still being practiced. Um, and with every single field, you know, we had like touched every, every square piece of the earth of the whole village, it seemed like. Um, and it was a, it was a really special welcome. It was a really amazing thing. And, uh, from that time, uh, people really took us in very fully and invited us and asked us to stay, um, sort of forever, you know, and to feel welcomed that way was, it uh, was amazing. It was an amazing thing to experience and uh, pretty unique. Certainly in my experience, it's not the sort of thing that happens in America. You don't just get like brought into a, a household and offered everything that you need <laughs> too often. Whenever we see people, they'd be like, what do you need? Can I give you flour? Like, do you have, you have bakpe? Like, do you have wheat flour? Like, do you have snampe? Um, take a bag with you. Like, you have vegetables. Like, here's some turnips. Like, I've got carrots. Here you go, folks let us plant gardens and um, so it really it really just felt like a an overflowing of of generosity um, all around and it still does so we've been there or we stayed there um, from that time through the whole year and then another plowing season um, and at that time we went back to America um, and we're in America for a couple of years um, and then we returned another in in the winter and then stayed from winter until summer um once more so we've been there for about two years altogether coming towards the plowing this year we're really looking forward to working with particularly with the young families some of the older families are not uh going to be plowing this year and also some of the older the older folks didn't plow last year but they're thinking about it this year because we're here and there's a little bit extra uh in terms of workers, uh, we're hoping to bring a couple of friends as well to help. And um, yeah, yeah. I think people could see and feel how much we love the place and we're inspired by it too. And so that's, you know, that sort of attitude's nice to have around as well. <laughs>